Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I'm going to review a budget 3D printer from Alagoo. This is a printer in the $200 range with the most features I have seen so far in the market. The price is in line with an Ender 3 Pro and the appearance looks like an Ender 3 V2. Compared to the Ender 3 V2, it comes with all the features that the Ender 3 V2 has, like a 32-bit board, silent stepper drivers, and belt tensioners. It is around $50 cheaper, but even comes with some extra features, including 1. A filament sensor, 2. Strain gauge auto bed leveling, 3. A PI spring steel sheet, 4. A Bontex style dual gear metal extruder, 5. Dual part cooling fans, 6. An optical limit switch on the Z axis, 7. A 4.3 inch color touch screen. So it looks pretty good to me. I would like to thank Elegoo for sending me this machine to review, and with that, let's get started. We have the base, the gantry, the power supply, the screen, the filament mount, and some tools. As this printer has a very standard and simple assembly process, I won't go into too much detail. Just secure the gantry onto the base, and then install the power module. Next, slide the screen into place. Install the filament holder using two T-nuts, and finally, connect all the cables. Turn on the machine, go to prepare, and click home to home the printer and ensure that everything is working. Go to level next, and click confirm to heat up the bed and nozzle and start auto bed leveling. Once this is done, we can set the Z offset and just press these up and down arrow keys to adjust the distance. Go to temperature to preheat the printer, which can be done by manually entering in the numbers or pressing this PLA button. Now, I will use my new favorite $13 Airy One White PLA and feed it in through the filament sensor and the Bowden tube. Go to the extruder tab to load in some filament. For a direct drive, I will just push the filament in manually, but since this is a Bowden setup, I will try to load the filament using the screen menu. I will now set up this printer in Cura. Select Add Printer, Non-Network Printer, and since this printer is new and the profile is not available yet, I will just select Neptune 2 and change the print volume to 220 by 220 by 280. I may need to modify the starting G-code as this printer uses a strain gauge for auto bed leveling, but I will just use the Neptune 2 profile for now and see how it works. Let's slice a simple calibration cube and start our first print. As they both have Bowden setups, there's nothing else I need to change. I will insert the SD card and begin our first test print, an XYZ calibration cube. The layers look fine, the text is very clear with just a bit of ringing here, and it looks good overall and the dimensions are accurate. Next, let's print a 3D Benchy. This Benchy turned out good. There were no cooling issues in this area, there was just a tiny bit of stringing, and the layers also look fine. This print is in line with one from an Ender 3. Then, using Airy One Rainbow Silk PLA, I will print a model of the Colosseum. The result looks cool, although the colors do look a bit strange for this arena, but the print itself looks pretty nice. Up next, let's print this pen holder using another $13 Airy One white PETG. This print turned out really pretty. The corners did not warp, the bottom looks very smooth and clean, and the inside looks great as well with minimal stringing. Now, let's try printing with ABS. Since this is an open 3D printer, I will use this air purifier from Comgro, which is supposed to be used for a laser engraver, but I found it also works quite well with 3D printers when it comes to handling the odor of printing with ABS. 
as this is just a 40 watt machine, the suction power is not super strong. So I will move the duct in close to the printing area without letting the print head bump into it. I will start by printing this headphone holder, and as this model contains two parts, which are the nut and the main body, I will print the nut first. This nut looks pretty good. These threads were not printed as well as they could have been with PLA, but overall there weren't any big issues. I will then print the body of the headphone holder and see if the threads can fit together properly. This ended up looking great other than the nozzle being too close to the bed and the bottom being squeezed a little bit too much. As the printing temperature is higher, the nozzle and the bed will come closer to each other. I should adjust the Z offset by 0.1mm, but I would rather have it squeeze a bit more than not stick well as I am just printing ABS on this PEI sheet without using glue. Anyways, the nut fits perfectly and this ABS model is fully functional. After that, when I tried printing with Airy one Blue TPU, I found that it was too challenging to feed the filament into the filament sensor because the TPU was too soft. I removed the sensor and just pushed the filament directly into the extruder, so it can now be fed in much easier. Then, use the screen menu to disable the filament sensor. The result seems pretty nice, and when I tested it on the actual cutter, it did fit. Still using TPU, let's print a doorstop. This model looks nice, and the bottom is clean. The slightly transparent TPU looks very cool, and the doorstop is also fairly flexible. Finally, I will try printing with nylon filament. Generally, this Bowden setup without an all-metal heat break may not be good for printing nylon, but I will use this Overtree Easy Nylon and see if it's easy enough to print with a basic Bowden setup printer. I will print a simple USB drive cover. On my first attempt, the print didn't stick to the bed as nylon just sticks to itself or to glue, so I tried again with a smooth print surface with glue applied. Unfortunately, the result is not good, most likely because I tried to print all three at once and there is way too much stringing. So I tried to print one at a time. This time, the result is better, but there is still stringing and the layers are not the best. The USB drive does fit, so it is still functional. I will print this model one more time. Once again, the print isn't great, but considering that this is just a basic printer with the Bowden setup and that doesn't have an all-metal hot end, the fact that this printer is able to deliver this acceptable result with nylon is nice. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this printer, starting with the pros. 1. The build quality is good and is in line with Creality and the other big brands. The assembly is fairly simple as well, and you can put it together in around 15 minutes. It also works right out of the box. 2. The print volume is 220 by 220 by 280 which is slightly larger than the standard 220 by 220 by 250 It's not a huge difference, but it can still be useful if you need to print something that's a bit taller. 3. The touchscreen is quite responsive. The UI is basically that of an Ender 3 V2, and the menu structure and button locations are all reasonable. 4. The textured PEI sheet sticks pretty well, and sometimes sticks too well with ABS, but it's still better than seeing the bottom of the print warp. 5. The print bed doesn't have bed leveling springs at the corners, and uses a design similar to Prusa machines. It uses spacers to support the bed, and even if it's not perfectly level, it lets the bed leveling sensor do its job. Personally, I prefer this more than leveling springs. 6. The strain gauge works pretty well, and as the print bed is supported by spacers, it won't move like the beds that are supported by springs, so you only need to do auto bed leveling once in a while. 
I did all of the test prints without re-leveling the bed, and I had no issues except for when printing with ABS. When printing with higher bed and nozzle temperatures, I should increase the Z offset to make the nozzle a little bit further from the bed to compensate for the heat expansion, but I forgot to do that, and so that was the only print that did not have a perfect first layer. 7. The metal extruder and Bond Textile dual gear work pretty well. I can print TPU with this printer, even if it's a Bowden setup, so we need to give credit to the extruder. 8. It uses a 32-bit motherboard with an STMF3201 chip running at 84 MHz, which is faster than the standard M3 running at 72 MHz, and it's also more power efficient, with all silent stepper drivers on the X, Y, and Z axis and the extruder. The motherboard has an extension port of an ESP Wi-Fi module. It should be able to print over Wi-Fi if you add a cheap $2 ESP8266 module, but I'm not sure if it will work with the MKS Wi-Fi plugin. I'm hoping that Elego will release a plug-in in the Cura marketplace, which could bring this printer to the next level. Now for the cons. 1. The filament sensor doesn't make it too easy to feed in filament. You may need to twist and turn it in order for it to pass through. When feeding TPU, I had to remove the filament sensor and disable it on the screen. But if you are printing non-flexible filament, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. 2. Using a micro SD card is a bit outdated, and I would prefer a USB port or at least a standard SD card slot. Even if this is a budget printer, upgrading the slot to a USB port really doesn't cost much. 3. The strain gauge leveling may leave a mark of filament on the bed when homing, and you need to remove it before the print starts. This is a common issue for all strain gauge leveling systems, and since the printer profile in Cura is not available yet, I just used the Neptune 2 profile, which does not have ABL. If I change the starting G-code and heat the nozzle up to 140 degrees Celsius, use G28 to do auto home, and then heat the nozzle up to the printing temperature, this could be easily fixed. I do hope that Elegoo will make the new profile available in Cura as soon as possible. 4. I do still prefer a direct drive over a Bowden setup. Since moving the extruder on top of the hot end won't cost more, any off-the-shelf Titan-style extruder and V6-style hot end should cost almost the same as this metal dual-gear extruder and the stock hot end. 5. It only comes with a single Z-axis, but at this price point, we cannot expect everything. If it came with a direct drive, an all-metal heat break, Wi-Fi printing, and a dual Z-axis, it would be a mid-range printer that may cost $300 or more. However, I would still prefer to pay a little more to get all of those features, so I'd suggest that they could launch a Neptune 3 Pro with all of these features at around $259. In conclusion, I would say that this is the new king of budget 3D printers at around $200. It came with many extra features that you usually would not expect at this price point. As far as I can see, there are no other $200 printers that come with more features than this Elegu Neptune 3 yet. The assembly is very simple, and it works well right out of the box. Other than PLA, PETG, and ABS, you can also print TPU and some modified nylon filament like Overture Easy Nylon for this basic printer. If you are looking for your first printer, or a budget printer with good value, you could definitely take a look at this Elegoo Neptune 3. I put the link to the printer under the description. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe to my channel, and press the bell icon to receive new video updates. I will see you next time.